Hey guys, how's it going? Today I thought I'd share with you everything I can about this corner enclosure. Among professionals and strong amateurs, this move is by far the most popular way to enclose the 4-4 point corner. But why is this tiny knight's move enclosure preferred, and how does white deal with this position? Well, if you enclose your corner any farther, then white can actually live in the 3-3 point unconditionally. Black blocks to limit white space, white pushes to maximize their space, black plays the hane, white hanes again and reduces this one stone down to two liberties, plays the atari, plays hane, and when white connects, thanks to this stone over here, black actually needs to fix this cutting point, and white connects here to make unconditional life. In fact, this will often end in sente because if black doesn't add a stone here, then white can actually cause trouble by coming out like this. Black needs to help the shape like this and white can run around. If black doesn't play the stone there and let's say tries to play here, this actually threatens the snapback and after this, black may be in some serious trouble. On the other hand, it's totally different in the knight's move corner. If white enters the 3-3 point on this corner, black blocks, white expands the eye space, black blocks again, white plays hane on the side, black blocks, and if white just connects, unless there are some white stones around here, making black need to fix the cut here, black can just hane here and reduce this to a dead shape. In which case, even if white cuts, black can actually just extend the stone over here. And locally speaking, there's actually no way for white to capture either of these two groups as long as black plays correctly. Therefore, unless there are some white stones around here, white should hane and instead of connecting, white should actually play the hanging connection. If black tries to play the same sequence as before, white can just block once, make black connect here, and make two eyes like this. So that would change things, right? So then when white plays the hanging connection, assuming black wants to capture the corner or at least try, black would want to Atari here. If white simply connects, what do you think black plays next? Black will play the Hane this time. And you can see that even if white blocks here, black just connects and this is definitely a dead corner shape. The real reason why white plays the hanging connection is so that if black Atari's here, white can make a Ko. If black decides to back off from the ko by connecting here, white can always live by playing hane on the other side. And then even if black takes, white just connects. And this move here will not capture white's corner because when white makes one eye right there, even if black tries to connect up and take advantage of white's liberty shortage, white, instead of playing self Atari here, can actually just connect here and black cannot connect back to the one stone. So the knight's move corner without any support around is a ko. And anything farther out than that is unconditional life. Now that we know the knight's move corner is usually better, how do we approach this as white? The normal knight's move approach will still be good here in some cases, but locally speaking, this allows black to play the kick to block off the corner in sente. And when white extends with the iron pillar here, black already has a reinforcement in the form of this knight's move over here. So that means black can actually pincer directly and basically start a pretty good attack on white. This large black corner still has the Aji of a white invasion at A, but that's not very relevant right now, and doing so right away would just hurt white's own group on the outside, and potentially fail anyway without the right setup. If white does invade, black can just descend, breaking the connection and harming white's outside position. White would expand the eye space, and black blocks, white pushes, creating a cutting point. Before white can think about cutting here though, white needs to make more liberties in the corner. But because white is not locally alive, White would still need this cut here to be quite serious, and in order to do that, White usually wants to start off with a stone around here before invading in the first place. When playing as black here, keep in mind that you didn't really give White anything in exchange for this corner, so even if White did invade and had support around here, you can just play the same way anyway, and you could play, for example, this kind of move and let White live, and just try to swallow up the group on the outside, because that's what's really important here, especially at the beginning of the game. So if the 3-3 invasion yields a ko and approaching gets us attacked, then what else can we play? White actually has some interesting invasion points on the second line with A or B, and now that you know how the 3-3 invasion goes and the problem with the far knight's move approach, you'll come to appreciate these options. The point of these invasions is to move into the corner or out to the side depending on black's response. For example, if white plays A and black takes a 3-3 point, white can move out quickly with a large knight's move. If black does anything to the one stone over here, such as blocking, don't defend it like this because you'll be heavy and black can just attack the whole thing like that. So instead, just play light and fast by extending for a new base over this way. If black attacks from this side, then you have a couple of options. You can run away, which will be a common choice. 
But another thing you can do in some cases is simply live by pushing into the corner, forcing like this, and simply expanding your eye space in this way. A common and potentially stronger response is to bump like this. If white tries to move into the corner, black blocks, and up to here, white has some trouble making two eyes actually in the corner. So it's pretty dangerous and unnecessary in most cases. Usually white moves away like this, black blocks the corner, and there is a clamp here, but uh, it's not too important. So we'll leave that out of this video for now. Regardless, white continues by extending quickly to the side with a large knight's move. Black can attack from this side and white can simply jump into the center. If you want to protect the local eye space a little better, you can play a move like this. This shape does have its weaknesses like black playing here. And if black pushes, what you don't want to do is simply block and let black take these two stones because after you force like this, you end up with an unnecessary stone over here in the form of an empty triangle. So a better way in this case would be to actually extend here and allow black to play the sequence like this. And it just becomes a complex fight. If you're still interested in knowing more about this clamp or you want to see the life and death in the corner here, you're welcome to ask me in the comments section below or in the discord. I could also make one minute short videos for these, so let me know in the comments. Black can also emphasize the outside with moves like this one or the large knights move over here. And in response to either one, you can just take the 3-3 point and just focus on making yourself alive. Next, let's take a look at B and how it differs from A. One drawback is that black can block directly with Q18. If white simply extends up, black blocks, and black has a bigger corner than with the other invasion. White does get an easy settlement on the outside this way though, with this forcing move followed by either a light and far extension over to here, or in some cases the two space extension. When I say this extension is light, what I mean is that if black comes in the middle, white can consider to tanuki this, but also if white attaches under and black goes after the one stone, White can double Atari and then cover the outside, and in many cases, this will just end up being black helping white settle. The rest of the differences I can think of are pretty much all upsides for this move. For example, when black attaches, there is one more option instead of playing here, which is to wedge in between here. If black backs off and white connects, white gets a slight reduction on black's corner compared to the variation we just looked at. And after that, white can expect to push here and then extend. This wedge variation looks pretty nice. But the reason why white often doesn't go for that and simply plays this uh, forcing move here and extends is because if we try to wedge, black also has the option to Atari from this side. A complicated sequence ensues where white basically creates a sacrifice group, black extends, white plays two forcing moves like this, and finally crawls with this one stone, which simultaneously also threatens these two stones in the corner. So black plays a move in the corner to extend the liberties and win that liberty fight inside. And then white starts playing some forcing moves and either continues simply like this or plays a giant squeeze sequence like this where uh, white can actually jump ahead here thanks to black's liberty shortage. Black pushes to create some defects in white's shape and then gets Atari'd and has to play up to here, captures the one stone and white needs to fix something, for example, playing here. Basically, it's a light variation where white is going to sacrifice some part of this group, um, you know, for example, like this, and also sacrifices in the corner. But the corner is actually quite big, so in many cases, this wouldn't be so good for white. So that's why you'll often see white simply playing this variation. If black plays the nobi, like what we saw for the other invasion, white could make it the same by pushing once here and then extending away. But white also has another interesting option, which is actually to extend away directly. And if black plays another move around the corner, then of course, we'll just ignore that and extend again and make a nice space over here. If black doesn't block the corner and just starts attacking us, again, we can still push here, but we can also choose to omit that move. For example, just jumping out. In the future, we may get the chance to jump into the corner directly like this, especially if our shape over here became a little more solid. For example, it's pretty much sente locally for us to get a stone anywhere around here because then we would be able to jump directly into the corner with R18 here. In the future, we may be able to jump into there without even having another stone over here, and Black's going to have to worry about that for the rest of the game until Black blocks. One other cool thing about this invasion move is that this highly discourages Black from playing a move on the outside, such as over here or blocking in the center, because if so, then White would get a much larger corner this way. There's one more! In some cases, particularly when Black has a stone around here, you may consider to invade with the attachment at A. If black blocks the corner, you can just extend, 
Black would normally descends like this and you can turn once and extend. If black takes away your extension, then you can Atari and then start running. If black plays Hane on the outside, you might extend to the 3-3 point, but actually if black descends here, you're actually going to be in trouble for life and death in the corner. But fear not, we have a sequence. If you play Hane here, then you're threatening to break out. Assuming you've played this invasion in a situation where black wouldn't want this one stone to get cut off, then black would probably extend here, preventing you from breaking out onto the side with something like this. Therefore, black would generally extend here. And after white plays the hanging connection here, black needs to descend here and then white can kosumi here and make two eyes like that. It's a pretty nice looking invasion sequence, right? Attach, hane, hane, extend, tiger's mouth, descend, and then expand the eye space and then play in the middle for two eyes. Worth noting here that it's actually a bad idea for black to Atari this because after white connects, black still has to connect here anyway and white's gonna live regardless, but in this situation, because white's inside became more solid, white actually has ways to sometimes potentially live in center here. For example, if black blocks, either right away or when black starts trying to capture this corner, if this move here is ever sente, for example, if black needs to protect the cut here, then this would actually be a living shape here. So it's a bad idea to actually make that Atari exchange. All right, guys, smash those like and subscribe buttons if you got value from this. And as always, stay safe and keep sente.